Good morning, friends. Okay, so today is the first day. Today is the first day that we're starting this YouTube journal together. So my name is Holly. Welcome. <laughs> um, so this is going to be um, some garden tours, some home projects, um, kind of following along with me. So like I said, my name's Holly. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, I live in Northwest Ohio. Um, I think that's zone 6A, 6B. We're 6B, but I kind of go with 6A. Um, and I live on a third of an acre in the suburbs. And um, I'm a single parent, and this is my journey. This is my journey raising um, my little girl to be more conscious, uh, conscious of where her food comes from and um, just a better steward of our land. So we have chickens, we have a garden, we have a little mini orchard. Um, I built this home in 2020, and I've been adding on and building um, our garden ever since. So I'm excited to have you here with me. Let's take a look at the take a look at the garden. Okay, so first things first, this is what it looks like when you walk out of my back door, right? So over here we have our garden beds. And so the garden beds start and go all of the way down here. And I will take you through each of these beds to let you know what's in every single one of them. And we have our compost bin and our chickens. Good morning, girls. Good morning, girls. We have our girls. We have everything ready to go. We have another little mobile chicken tractor. And then we have a little orchard over there. So I'll take you through everything start to finish. Okay, so this is gonna be a big week this week. We are going to be harvesting potatoes because as you can see, <laughs> my potatoes have all died back. So in my garden, I do no-till gardening. Um, I don't like to disturb the soil or anything like that. Um, and we also practice organic gardening methods. Um, for potatoes, I next year I might try them in a raised bed, but I kind of like the idea of dumping out the bag onto a tarp and all the potatoes just kind of are there. <laughs> so I've been doing that the last couple years and that's worked well and my daughter really likes digging for potatoes. So that is coming this week because you plant them, they grow, they flower, and then they die. And that's when you know they're ready to harvest. And these, my friends, are dead. So in here we have um, we have Kennebec, we have um, Russet, and we have Yukon Gold. Those are the three varieties that I planted this year. So I'm excited to see because digging potatoes is like a treasure hunt. <laughs> you never really know what you're going to get. So um, inside here we have, I believe, I think 12 or 16 um, of the 10 gallon garden bags. So grow bags. So, and then over here I will show you Olivia's garden space. Okay, so we go from potato bags all the way over to Olivia's garden bed. Olivia is my seven-year-old daughter, and her goal was to make sure you could not see any dirt. <laughs> Hello, Mr. B. And I think she accomplished that. So um, in front of these last few raised beds, I do have sweet potatoes in 15-gallon grow bags. Um, those are Beauregard sweet potatoes. And Olivia's bag, she has these, Olivia's bed, she has these beautiful cosmos growing, which have kind of taken over. She has um, all of the leftover um, tomatoes. When I was pruning them, you can prune them to a single stem, which is how I like to grow them if they're indeterminate tomatoes. And all the little suckers that you pull out from the armpits, it broke her heart that I was throwing them away. So she added suckers. So, um, and she took them from a pile that I had, so we don't, know what all of them are yet until they start having fruit but I think this one is a cherry and that one might be a Paul Robeson tomato so which is a slicer and then inside here she has some nasturtium we planted this one sunflower in her bed and it is glorious I think it's a teddy bear or a teddy something sunflower so really cool 
and then she had some sweet alyssum and some sweet william and then we love melons and so you can't see it <laughs> but this is actually um sweet passion melon they're like mini personal size melons and we should have planted like one or two on each side of this um teepee style trellis that she's got in here let me see if you can see it it's hard to see but um i think she has like four or five on each side so we'll see how that works out okay coming around to the other side of olivia's bed Again, you will see a theme here with some leftovers. So we planted onions that I'll show you in one of the other beds. And we took our leftover onions and we planted them here. These are Patterson onions. First year growing those. So I'm excited to see how those hold up. They're supposed to be really good for storage. We'll see. Um, and then there are two more tomato plants that we're not sure what they are. So we'll see once they start producing fruit this one where was the one i found oh this one is kind of striped and i have a tigerella tomato so i thought well oh, that might be what that is but we'll see she also planted one bean plant one singular bean and it has taken over and it's this bulb is just wild and crazy and we love it it's just wild and crazy so this is the next garden bed this is sweet corn attempt number two at growing sweet corn. Last year I tried to grow it and I did not water it properly and I didn't feed it enough. So it had teeny tiny little ears that didn't get pollinated. You know. I should also mention that I practice high intensity gardening which means I plant things pretty close together and I let it be like a living mulch if that makes sense. So plant them closer together, feed them really well with organic fertilizer and um, that way I don't have to mulch and weed and stuff as often. So this in here was my first attempt at growing artichokes this year. I put two of them in. That one I'm pretty sure died, but this one is looking good. Then right here we have eggplants. Let's see if we have any up. There's some eggplants growing underneath there. I think I did, um, this one's a diamond eggplant. Not sure what the other one is. This is pink celery that has gone to seed. Really, really interesting flavor. And this is Utah celery, Utah tall celery. I've already harvested that, I think twice, cause it's kind of a cut and come again. So you can harvest it and it grows right back. This one I believe is a diamond eggplant as well. And then of course the sweet potatoes and that is bed number two. Okay, so bed number three. This is my fall gardening bed, and I'll get into that a little bit more when we head over here to some of the brassicas, but um, this is middle of July, and this is the time that I start to plant the things that I want to harvest in the fall. So in this bed are some determinant tomatoes, so it's round two of tomatoes. Um, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think I have seven or eight Roma tomato plants growing in there that I started from seed. And then I also have two golden nuggets. Um, and these are determinate, meaning they only grow to a determinate side. So you can grow indeterminate or determinate tomatoes. Indeterminate means however high of a support you give them, they will keep growing. <laughs> determinate means they're gonna grow to a certain size and they're gonna stop. Then they're gonna put on their fruit mostly at the same time over a week or two, and then they're gonna be done. Determinants are gonna keep putting on their tomatoes little by little all through the season. So if you're into like canning or um, preserving or anything, determinants kind of amazing because you know you're gonna get it all at once and be done. Honestly, I just take them all when they come off ripe. If I'm gonna use it from salsa or sauces or something, and I just pop them in a freezer bag, and when I'm ready to use them, the skins slip off and they're ready to go for whatever I want to make that day. Okay, so back to this bed. So this is the determinate tomato bed, which is awesome. And then I did have some extra, I did have some extra tomatoes that I didn't have the heart to thin out after I started the seeds. So these are large cherry tomatoes. These are Roma tomatoes, which is a determinate variety. So determinates need the support like a cage and 
um, indeterminates you can single step. So I have some bamboo canes and I have some one by twos like furring strips as well. Okay, so this is bed number four, I believe. So out in front, like I said, I have the cherry tomato and the Roma. And then all along here, I have cilantro planted. I have the three that I started from seed in little pots that I transplanted. And then I also direct seeded right into the ground um, a row of cilantro so that I can kind of have a succession of cilantro. So this is our dill plant. Yes, we make pickles, but mostly my daughter really likes to hatch the black swallowtail butterflies. Um, so that is where they lay all their eggs. <laughs> and then she pops them in there and gets them ready um, for their life. So this right here, this is a Jersey devil tomato. Um, produces like the long paste tomatoes, which are great for sauces and salsas. This beauty right here is a Paul Robeson. It's a slicer tomato. It gets like a deep red, almost purple, and it's got like a slight subtle smoky flavor. It's really good. Um, this is a Valencia tomato, a little more sweet. Um, and then I've got, what do I have over here? Oh, I have a Sunray tomato. That one is a yellow. And then I have two tomatillo plants. You have to plant two if you're going to get tomatillos because they have to pollinate each other. Um, so I think I have a purple and a regular, but I might have two purples. I'm not sure. Started them from seed. They're doing pretty well. All of them are doing pretty well. So we'll see. We'll see how they go. Inside I have, inside the rows, I have nasturtium planted. Um, and then I think I have a one lonely rutabagia, which is, ooh, that guy's glorious too. Okay, coming around to the other side of this bed, I have basil. I have a couple different types of basil planted um, in the beds. And this is just kind of number one to throw off pests because herbs um, have that smell that the pests kind of get confused and don't know where they're going and number two because I like cooking with fresh herbs so um, there's some different types of basil like some cinnamon basil some holy basil I think and um, some Genovese like the sweet normal basil in another bed too so these are giant ox heart tomatoes and I have a bunny friend that has been eating them before I can get them normally so he ate these stinker but we gotta share with the bunnies so I always plant 10% more share with the birds and the bunnies it's my theory so this one I think is a giant ox heart as well and then over here on this cattle panel trellis so this is a uh, what are they 16 12 I think 16 foot cattle panel trellis this one might be a hog panel actually that you can get at tractor supply or whatever your local feed store is. They're way more expensive now than they used to be. But um, And so on this one, we have more personalized melon. So this is Kajari melon. It grows like green, like a honeydew, but it tastes really, really sweet, like the best cantaloupe you've ever had. Um, so Kajari and Sweet Passion are our favorite melons. And then I think I planted one more. Oh yeah, Honey Rock melon for the first time. So I have two Kajari and two Honey Rock over there. And then I have three Sweet Passion, which is the same one that Olivia planted, climbing up this trellis. And as they grow, hi little guy, as they grow, we put these little netted bags around them and then tie them to the panel. And then when they're ripe, they fall off into the bag. So you'll come out in the morning and there'll be like melons waiting for you in the bag, which is, you know, the best part of the morning, honestly. <laughs> Um, so down here I have my second succession of carrots. I already planted some this spring. This is my second s succession of them. Um, I like to plant them underneath uh, the tomatoes and along the row. Again, because I like high intensity planting and I don't want to waste any space. So these are my Tigerella, I think that's how you pronounce it, tomatoes. This is my first year growing them, but they're really pretty and I'm excited about them. I don't love fresh tomatoes eating them, like, but I do love them in salsa and sauce and soups and all the things. So I'm excited about that. This is a sweetie cherry tomato. I didn't really grow cherry tomatoes up until this year, 
but one of my awesome neighbors um, went on vacation and I was harvesting some tomatoes. She said it was okay <laughs> from her garden and I added them to um, one of my sauces that I made and it just added a nice balance of flavor. So now I throw everybody in there. This is a, it's not labeled, but this is a federally tomato. Again, a paste tomato and they get really large and not deep red, but they're delicious. Um, some echinacea or cone flowers for the pollinators. I didn't really grow a lot of flowers the first year and my garden was not like full of pollinators, but now I'm committed to growing a whole bunch of flowers and it's like a little pollinator haven up in here. Oh, of course there is a fairy garden because I have a seven year old and that water is for the bees. They can stop and get a drink. This is my blueberry nursery. <laughs> Um, we're going to be putting in a berry and grape trellis garden bed situation on the other side of the yard and I have all my blueberry plants so I'm just growing them. This is my little blueberry nursery um, and my daughter's growing marigolds in that pot and she was tired of the bunnies eating them so she put some mesh on top so they wouldn't eat the sprouts or I think it might have been the birds, who knows. Okay, continuing in this bed, we have our sweet basil. Um, when you're growing basil and it starts to do this little thing on top, it means it's about to flower. So you just go down to the next little armpit or joint and pull it off like that. And then it'll encourage, it'll encourage it to branch out and get even bushier. So I usually just come through and pick these. If I'm not ready to use them, I can dry them in the dehydrator, bundle them up and hang them in your house. Or honestly, I feed them to the chickens sometimes too. Okay, so next to the basil, which smells really lovely as I pick that, I've got another row of carrots growing underneath here and another row of carrots growing underneath there. This is a Jersey Devil tomato. It's a little bit slower behind because I actually um, took a sucker off the other plant and transplanted it because I had another plant die and that was its replacement. This one I've never grown before, but I think this is a homestead. No, this isn't a polka. A polka I've grown before. It's supposed to be a single stem. It's going crazy. We're just, we're just going to let it. <laughs> this one is the homestead tomato. Never grown that before. The bunnies like them. I've gotten a couple. Let's see how it goes. San Marzano, classic classic. Um, these are actually semi-determinate so you should let them kind of bush out and I don't know what I was thinking and I I single stemmed them. So I realized my mistake about you know four weeks into their growing process. <laughs> we'll see how they how they recover but it'll be okay. Then this one is a gold meadow tomato. First year growing that one too. I really tried to change up the varieties this year. And then I think this is a sunray, yeah, sunray tomato in that bed. And again, single stemmed, unless you make a mistake. <laughs> okay, over in this bed, this is my perennial herb half of the bed. So this is orange thyme. This is oregano. This is cumin. I thought it would be really fun to grow cumin last year. And it takes forever to grow and it's not worth it. Just buy, buy yourself some cumin from the grocery store. Um, but it's seeded itself everywhere. So that's annoying. These are garlic chives. If you haven't tried these yet, you must try them. It will change your life. <laughs> garlic chives changes everything. And they're not supposed to um, flower like that. You can harvest them and they'll keep growing back. Um, but I wanted some seeds. So I'm letting a few of them go to seed and when they flower, and then I will take the, I will cut them, hang them upside down. All the little seeds will dry and then I'll put them in a little envelope and have them for next year. So that'll be great. Um, there's some rosemary in there. And then this is thyme. It's just growing wild. And then this is my pepper bed. So peppers like to hold hands when they grow. They want to be close. <laughs> so these are. So these are big red peppers. So red peppers are... They start, all peppers like start off green and then turn different colors, except for the purple ones, um, the sweet peppers anyway. And even jalapenos and stuff, they'll turn red if you let them get ripe. Basically green peppers are like unripe peppers, but that's okay, because they're still delicious. So these are gonna be red. I think these are some purple varieties, purple beauties. Yeah, 
And then I've got some yeah, ones that are gonna be yellow. More purples. Oh yes, yeah, sun bright yellow. It's another little tag in there. It says sun bright yellow. Um, and some more purples. So this half of the bed is sweet peppers. And then some marigolds to keep the bunnies away. Salvia is, I think that's what it is. Salva, salvia, yeah. Um, is planted um, in a lot of these pots. And so the pollinators really love them. They were purple and pink and just beautiful. Um, and then nasturtium because they're like a trap one. So the bad bugs like them and they go in there and eat them instead of my plants. <laughs> and the bunnies and all those things supposedly don't like them. So for spicy peppers, let me read this tag. This one is a um, Eros con pollo pepper. I've never grown that, but I saw um, Jess on Roots and Refuge talk about it a couple years ago and I, I needed to try it. Um, I have a whole bunch of shishito peppers in here because again, Jess was talking about blistering shishito peppers and dipping them in an aioli and I thought yep <laughs> yes ma'am I can do that um and then there's let me see serranos and there's some anchos there's some jalapenos yeah there's some beautiful jalapenos and then jalapenos and then I think there's some anaheims which are like kind of spicy but not and then on this side oh look it's our friend cumin it never goes away anyway i will release that okay and then more shishitos yes and one of my daughter's friends switched up some of the spicy pepper tags so not 100 percent that those what those are but i know these are spicy and these are sweet okay so if you keep coming over this way this is leeks these are all leeks again these are planted a hands width apart um, and these will just stay in here all season and they will keep growing these will stay in here I can pull them as I need them for soups I love like leek and potato soup I mean honestly I have it um, canned up like crazy I love it over the winter so I'll probably do that again because <laughs> it's awesome now this I need to take a second to explain okay so in this bed you'll see this theme again and again through my garden. We have cabbage moss, the white caterpillars that you're like, oh my gosh, they're so pretty. And then they fly into your garden and they leave their little yellow eggs. And then two days later, all your brassicas are like gone. Brassicas being cabbage, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, all that kind of stuff, right? So these cabbage moths come in and like decimate your stuff and their, their worms are like, their caterpillars are green. So you can't really see them to pick them off and they're so annoying and so year after year i was like doing the hoops and the netting and the neem oil and the organic stuff or like picking them off and feeding them the chickens and like single mom i do not have time for that um so i um was watching another youtuber in um like a garden tour she was doing in the uk and she had these like boxes that she made with the screen and i was like Dude, that's so smart because you can just like pick it off harvest your stuff put it back down and it's like sturdy it doesn't blow over you don't have to take them on like don't have to worry about clips and stuff so these are my brassic boxes now <laughs> um and you could put like frost fabric over them and stuff but brassicas don't mind cold so i don't do that um but i do keep them covered so that cabbage moths don't because there's nothing worse than like biting it biting into like awesome fresh homegrown broccoli that you like started from seed and did all this work and then there's like a, a worm like no so in this first brassica box we have cabbage there were a few cabbages in there i've harvested most of them this guy was late to start um we had an incredibly dry spring and early summer so um, that's why my grass is brown but these are coming in brussels sprouts you have to grow a lot of Brussels sprouts to make it worth your while, and I love Brussels sprouts, so I'm giving it a try. So I've got one, two, I think two of the green and two of the Red Bull Brussels sprouts, and then one cabbage left in there. And then over here we have, now this is going to shock you, more melons. But these are new ones for me. So this is Prescott, Prescott Fond Blanc. 
I flunked French, so I'm probably butchering that, but Prescott, Prescott Fond Blanc on this side. And then on this side, we have, what does this say? We have <laughs> that. Delice de la Table? Della de la Table? I don't know. We have another, oops, another um, melon that's personal size. So that's going to grow up this cattle panel and come on the other side. And on this side, I believe we have silver slicer cucumbers. I like these because they don't get bitter because cucumbers, as they're like growing in the heat, tend to get bitter and gross. And there's nothing worse than biting into that. Well, I guess biting into broccoli with cabbage worms is a little gross, but yeah. Um, this is our bug house. I am not a fan of bugs. My daughter is, but I like what they do to my garden, for my garden. The good bugs eat, eat the bad bugs. A little quick stop for the nasturtium. I think these are the Bloody Mary nasturtium. I started out with tags. Yeah, Bloody Mary nasturtium. Oh, I love those so much. Okay. So silver slicers over here. Behind the silver slicers are three more Brussels sprouts. Now these Brussels sprouts are supposed to be like shorter Brussels sprouts. So I was like, oh, that's perfect. There's this space in between here where all my friends, they're, <laughs> they're growing up the top, but I'm not an expert. We're all just making it work. So these are our onions and they are looking oh so good. So these are Patterson onions. These are supposedly the new thing for like storage onions. They're supposed to store like nine or 12 months once you harvest and cure them. So I'm excited about that. I'll take you guys along for that journey. And then these are red wing, red wig onions. Um, again, good storage onions, supposed to be good. So that'll be fun. Over here, again, we have our three mini Brussels sprouts in there and then these are suyo long cucumbers I'm excited about those kind of like English cucumbers like the long not very many seeds love that this is where we did have our spring peas and it was really fun because the neighborhood kids would come over and just eat them and it was just really lovely those are done because <laughs> it's summer and it's hot and so I have replanted red malabar spinach because it's a climbing type and i think the chickens are gonna like it and i grow lots of things for the chickens so i'm excited to see a couple of those sprouting here's where i plant my lettuce we ate on this from gosh april through two weeks ago and then it finally had bit the dust so i just replanted it succession sowing there's a bee right next to my head and i'm trying to be calm um good morning mr b so i did four rows of cut and come again lettuce let's see what did i plant i did red romaine uh slow bolt lettuce i usually do a tango yep tango red and i think tango green so that is our lettuce area okay this inside this cage here is a hot mess but bear with me because this one is about to get turned over so this one had kale one two three four kales and then it had one two i think like six or seven cabbages and kohlrabi and it was awesome it now has two kales a whole bunch of weeds <laughs> two cabbages left and these are my i replanted cabbage and broccoli and i think some flowers some echinacea flowers too and because these are the things that the cabbage moms would lay their little babies on it's inside the brassica cage as well so we are going to later this week take this bed and turn it over and get it ready for fall gardening because those cabbages should be coming out in the next week or so um, also let's have a moment for the rutabecchia look at these i didn't even know i didn't even know that these were a thing look at them they're so pretty and they're just in time for fall they came a little, I thought they were going to be like summer flowers and maybe because I started them from seed I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> uh, maybe I started them too late, but so they're here now and I'm excited to have them. Okay, after, after the rutabecchia, we then have, this is my perennial 
um, asparagus and strawberry bed. They like to be planted together because asparagus doesn't like weeds and strawberries have no problem covering everything. <laughs> so again, this year wasn't awesome for strawberries because of the drought. I just think I needed to water them more, but we did get some off them. They were tasty. So asparagus grows out of the ground like the asparagus spears that you see in the store and you harvest them when they're young and they're delicious and tender and it tastes nothing like grocery store asparagus. It's like delicious. And then um, after you get what you need, the first year you plant them, I planted two year crowns and the first year I didn't harvest any. The second year I harvested a few, oh no, yeah, that was this year, harvested some. And then next year I can harvest like a lot more, but you harvest what you need and then you let the plant send up all of these and you let them bush out like crazy you look like a crazy forest and that is what gives the roots the crowns the energy to come back year after year and if you take care of your asparagus and feed it I mean the package says 10 or 15 years you'll get it but honestly people have had asparagus growing in their gardens for like 30 40 years and it's not going anywhere so over here after the asparagus and strawberries we have um, okay, so this was, I got two blackberry plants that were supposed to be personal size, like two to three feet blackberry plants. And let me just tell you, my friends, this is, this is two plants. Yeah. So this has become the blackberry bed. And then over here we have shallots and these are ready to harvest. So we will be harvesting, drying, and curing shallots this week as well and i'm excited to show you where we do that and how we do that as well and then these two are golden raspberries and um i've got one here and one here and they are sweeter and delicious and they're in their little pots because they're going to live in the berry wonderland that we're creating together <laughs> i'm excited to do that Okay, something that I forgot to mention when we were over here is this is my geo bin. Now I do three of these all together. Um, and so I put in here garden waste, grass clippings, all that kind of stuff. And it's really cool because it's supposed to be no turn and stuff. I will say, I mean, I think if you turn it one little quicker, but I use the Johnson, I think it's Johnson something method um, where you put like wire or a pipe with holes or something in the middle so that air is getting in there and air is getting in from all the sides and you put your waste in there and then I use shredded cardboard to layer it on top and it composts and so this has been like full 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 several times and it keeps breaking down breaking down and in the spring I can use this to top off all my beds which is awesome now down through here we have what is our wildflower row last year it came in really thick but again this year with the no rain and basically when i'm mowing i'm just cutting the tops off the weeds at this point um so not as glorious as it once was but we'll see so this has wildflowers and sunflowers and milkweed for the pollinators and lots of really cool wildflowers keep poking their head up but oh and then we have a couple sunflowers that really wanted to show off so kind of amazing right because this is a school owned um, a local school owns this and so they play soccer and stuff so obviously they spray with chemicals and I don't do that and so I wanted some kind of buffer between my yard and theirs since I take my grass clippings and put them in the compost I didn't want any um, non-organic chemicals and so I figured wildflowers would be a good little buffer plus sunflowers are known to pull toxins out and these bachelor buttons are having a moment having a moment Okay, before I get to the orchard, I wanted to show you guys a little bit more about the chicken coop. So, number one, I've got a strawberry bed. Um, and in on the side of the chicken coop, we have the chicken snacks, which are the kale, 
<laughs> then we've also got some flowers and stuff. These are Queen's Lace or Queen Lime Zinnias from Baker Creek. They are amazing. Those are our girls. Lime. Queen Lime. Oh, thank you. Okay. So in here we have our chicken coop. It is 9 by 16. It is, good morning girls, glorious. It has fence on all the sides. Back here, you can open. You, we do deep letter. So this drop down door for clean out can flip down and you can just scoop it all into a wheelbarrow. Um, it's got the three nesting boxes. It's got the, um, wrapped roosts it's got insulation on the ceiling um and it's got little plexiglass um uh, windows that can slide down if we were having like crazy cold again i live in ohio so chickens are fine and cold um it's hot that you have to worry about so lots and lots of ventilation um anyway so this is the coop and then Sorry, having to do that one-handed. Tricky. Okay, so underneath the coop, hi girls, um, we have, um, I have uh, predator proof by having the, uh, what is this called? The fencing. The mesh. Yeah, the mesh, thank you. Coming all the way out, we have drop down egg box, egg collecting box, and then I also have um, a drop down door to top off their feed and water. I kind of have their feed and water spread out all over the place anyways if there's no bullying but um, and then an omelet door. This has the door that we can just throw snacks in which is their favorite door and then also uh, the full-size door to be able to walk in. Uh, yes so and then of course we have the chicken tractor which right now has our babies in it because we just got them. They're not babies. They're like four to six months old, but that way they have their quarantine period and it's nice for them to get around the yard. So I have two, um, gosh, what are these called again? Pink dog, pink flowering dogwoods, um, for some shade because again, built this house in 2020. There was no trees, no nothing. So I put in these, um, the, Arborvitae, 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 you know, those. Um, so those will grow about eight feet tall to create some privacy from whatever happens over there. And then we have our orchard area. Okay, so here in our orchard, we have um, a lot of trees. They're all like dwarf size, um, or I've pruned them to be dwarf size, because even if they're not dwarf size, you can prune them and make them dwarf size. And I don't want to be standing on a ladder when I'm like 75 harvesting apples. <laughs> so I want all of mine to be like six feet or under, six and a half tops, right? So I'm excited to show you what we got. Okay, so the first one, and we planted these in the spring. The first one, what's this one? This is a Jonathan. My neighbor has one of these and we harvested and made the best applesauce um, the first year. So I wanted to get some of those. This is our Chicago Hardy fig tree, um, and I'm excited for that because I wanted a fig tree. This is our Honeycrisp because, honestly, it's the best apple on the planet, and we needed a Honeycrisp. Um, this is this is a pear. I don't love pears, but my sister really likes them, so I thought, well, that would be fun. Um, so this is a honey sweet pear. It's the texture for me. I love the taste of pears, but I don't like the texture. This one's supposed to be a little smoother. So we'll see. Um, this one I'm super excited about. This one is our cherry tree. And again, when I planted these, these were um, either bare root or um, easy starts. So they were like in a 4 by 10 pot. And so we just dug the hole um, in the spring as soon as we could work the ground. We dug the hole um, bigger than the actual bare root um, and we planted them and then we put the native soil back around it because you're not supposed to fertilize or anything like that. And then on top of the native soil we put um, some mushroom compost and then wood chips. 
and oh no we put cardboard a layer of cardboard mushroom compost and then wood chips and the cardboard is completely gone <laughs> the worms have taken it eaten it and made it into yummy um, soil so I will top these off again in definitely in the spring maybe in the fall um, to make sure they have everything they need so this is a sweet cherry this is a plum what kind of plum is this this is an on it's a peach this is an all-star peach and um, peaches do well here because look at my neighbor's peaches it's gonna do well so all-star peach and then this one is an ever-bearing mulberry this one we got and then um, the first one it didn't take <laughs> it didn't take so we had to um, Stark Brothers is awesome and they sent me out another one so we replanted it and then this one it's a plum. yeah it's a plum and we are excited about that the methylene plum I'm excited about that and then I have Olivia's area over here where she has transplanted some beautiful wildflowers and nasturtium and it's gonna be good can't wait to see it all fill in so I want to thank you guys for coming with me today on my first ever garden tour. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you consider subscribing and um, coming with us on our journey. We've got a lot of fun projects. We're gonna be building a rain barrel collecting system, collection, water collection system. We are going to be installing the um, grape and berry area. We are going to be putting in irrigation and just all kinds of home projects and garden projects on our little suburban homestead. Can't wait to see you guys next time. Bye.